Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Stacy with me. Shalom. And in today's class, we're going to be coming out of the second chapter of the Shepherd of Hermes. Okay. As visions. Talking about Hermes's neglection of his talkative wife and his lewd sons. Okay. Or his disobedient children. Okay. We're going to find out in this video that this is a big deal as far as the service of our father is concerned. Because it not only got Hermes in trouble, we learn in a book called The Shepherd of Hermes, but this also got Job in trouble and even Adam. The same thing. The same thing. Mm -hmm. Talkative wives and new children. Okay. Well, back here with Adam, it's not so much to do with the children because they weren't born yet when Eve had her expedition with Satan there in the garden. Mm -hmm. But the thing I want to bring out in this video, and this is a little bit early for this, um, those who watch it again, this will make perfect sense. But if you would go ahead and read verse 17. Okay, this is Genesis 3 and 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So, why did Adam have to go through this? Because he hearkened to the voice of his wife. Because he hearkened to the voice of his wife. All right. So, we'll come back to that. Just wanted to mention that because of the relationship between Adam's suffering and his wife. Now, let's go over and let's look at Job. Plenty of people have talked about Job and all that he go through. You know, this book of Job is pretty long mm -hmm. and has a lot of details of his friends, you know, trying to console him on everything that's happened to him. Right. But we're going to look here in chapter one, mm -hmm. which is oftentimes overlooked because we want to get at the root cause of why this all happened to Job. And what we're going to find here is that this is the same thing that happened to Hermes and is the same thing that's happening to us now. Okay. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and just read. Verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. So he's perfect. Right. The scriptures call him perfect. Mm -hmm. Right. Scripture never lies. So this guy was upright and one that feared our father. Right. He hated evil. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's read verse 2. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. So he had 10 children. And you see there in verse three that he has a lot of sheep, a lot of camels, a lot of yoke. This is a very wealthy man. Mm -hmm. Says he's the greatest in the East. Right. Most wealthy man in the whole East of right. the world. Mm -hmm. But look at verse four. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sit and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. Now, here's the most important verse in all of the book of Job. Right. I mean, it has over 30 chapters in it, mm -hmm. but this verse right here, we got to understand because this is why Job got in trouble. Okay. You read it there that his sons went and feasted in their houses, everyone on his day. Mm -hmm. Now, what is his day? So you're probably one of the only persons that I've ever heard say that his day is his birthday. Yeah. And I kind of got that intuitively, but I'm looking here at some other translations and it wasn't absolutely necessary. Because when you look in the Amplified version, it has parenthetically that it was his birthday. Right. But the Common English Bible says that it was their birthday. Yeah, when you say that, when it specifically says that it's his day, it starts to make sense that it was his birthday. Yeah, I'm glad I'm looking at these other scriptures because I've caught a lot of flack over the years. Yeah. As people question, you know, why are you saying this is his birthday? And I'm like, what else is it? Like you said, it's his day. Well, I also was wondering where you get that from, too. Intu I was like, intuition. Hey, what, what makes you say that? I don't know about that. But now we're looking at this scripture and it says it clearly, you know, there's several translations that don't say his day. which That's all it could be is his birthday. They were celebrating birthdays. Right. So let's go on to verse five. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about. That Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. 
Thus did Job continually. So here these people have had these birthday parties. These 10 sons have invited their brothers and their sisters over to celebrate birthdays. And here is Job realizing that these people probably done messed up. Mm -hmm. Now we have to go back to the first verse where we've learned that Job is perfect. Right. So Job didn't go to the birthday party. Right. Job is sitting at home crying for his children who are cursing themselves because of these birthday parties that they love so much. And then here we see in verse five that he's actually trying to sanctify them, mm -hmm. clean them up, mm -hmm. get that evil off of them. And he's trying to make burnt offerings to appease our father for their sins that they've committed. Mm -hmm. But we learned that it didn't work. Right. Job had to go through it. Right. So this would automatically tell you that if he wouldn't have actually had to sanctify them or even make a burnt offering for them if there was nothing wrong with birthdays. If there was nothing wrong. And see right there, he already realizes that something is going on. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's jump over here to the Shepherd of Hermes. Because what we find out is that this was no accident. This wasn't an isolated case here with Job or even Adam. But this is the way it happens for all of us, including us here today. Okay. What we're going to learn here is that we are all like Job, kind of. <laughs> but this is, let's just get into it. First one. As I was on my way to Kuma, about the same time that I went the year before, I began to call to mind the vision I formerly had. And again, the spirit carried me away and brought me into the same place in which I had been the year before. Now, like we said, this is chapter two right. of the first section in the book called The Shepherd of Hermes, which we know as visions. This is vision two. When once again, Hermes in the middle of this dream that he's having is coming face to face with this angel of this church that's giving him this message that we're going to read here. Right. This is a very important book. You guys should check it out. Uh, maybe after this video, but we're going to go on to verse two. And when I come into the place, I fell down upon my knees and began to pray unto the Lord and to glorify his name, that he had esteemed me worthy and had manifested unto me my form of sins. So again, this is Hermans receiving this vision. Right. Of course, these visions are important. We all don't get these. Not everybody gets to hear from our father directly in the form of a vision. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is a big deal. And when I rose from prayer, Behold, I saw standing over against me the old woman whom I had seen the last year, walking and reading in a certain book. I just want to give you a little bit of background here so we have a little bit of understanding of what's going on for those who haven't read the book. And she said unto me, Canest thou tell these things to the elect of God? I answered and said unto her, Lady, I cannot retain so many things in my memory, but give me the book and I will write them down. So here we are getting into the important stuff. Okay. Where... You have this figure, this lady, who is the representation of the church, the whole body of the church as a whole. Mm -hmm. She is the church in this vision that Hermes is having. And she has a message for the elect of God. And she's asking Hermes to share it. Right. Now here, I realize this is a book. It's kind of a parable too, where we're all like Hermes and we're expected to share this message. Mm hmm. This is one of the reasons why we focus so much on the shepherd of Hermes, because we got to get this message from this book. The rest of the stuff, the lessons, too. We have to get these messages if we want to see the kingdom of heaven. Right. This is where we learn how to live in the kingdom of heaven out of the shepherd of Hermes. Too bad they took it out of our Bibles right. so mm -hmm. that, you know, many people don't know about it. But or believe it or believe it. Mm -hmm. so not, yeah. But anyway, the kingdom of heaven is not for everybody. Like right. they said, the very few. And the few will be those who trust in the scripture. Right. But anyway, let's go on. Take it, say she, and see that thou restore it again to me. This book, this message that Hermes has the responsibility of sharing with the rest of us or sharing with the elect of God. As soon as I had received it, I went aside into a certain place of the field and transcribed every letter for I found no syllables. Now, here it is. He's telling us that the book was written in Hebrew little side note because mm -hmm. Hebrew uses letters they don't really use words mm -hmm. the the letters themselves have meanings and so when you put combinations of letters together they form words mm -hmm. but him he's only getting the letters and so now he has to go <laughs> try to figure out the syllables mm -hmm. that's just the way Hebrew works right mm -hmm. but anyway let's go on and as soon as I had finished what was written in the book the book was suddenly caught out of my hand, but by whom I saw not. So you remember Hermes is still in his vision kind of thing. Right. You know, so there is some supernatural a little bit here. Let's go. 
After 15 days, when I had fasted and entreated the Lord with all earnestness, the knowledge of the writings were revealed unto me. Now, the writing was this. Now, just as an aside note, this 15 days is talking about 15 years. We've oh. talked about it in several videos. We used to, you know, cover the prophecy aspects of the Shepherd of Hermas. And it has a lot of prophecy in the book. It tells you when the tribulation is. It tells you when is what's going to happen during the tribulation. Of course, it's, you know, a little metaphoric, but it gives a lot of information in here. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's let's read what the message is. Thy seed, O Hermas, has sinned against the Lord and have betrayed their parents through their great wickedness. And they have been called the betrayers of their parents and have gone on in their treachery. So here's a big deal. Yeah. Hermes is getting in trouble. We're going to find here. Not because of himself and what a horrible person he is. Right. If he was, he probably would have never been given this opportunity. Mm -hmm. But he is a good guy, too, right. like Job was. Mm -hmm. But it's his children that's getting him in trouble. Yeah. And just like Job. His children are doing lewd acts, breaking commandments. And because they are doing that, they are actually betraying their parents. Yeah. Earlier in the book, it mentions that Hermas was pious and always had a good attitude. So we right. see that it ne wasn't necessarily him. But like you said, it was his ch children. Like like the book of Job, where it shows mm -hmm. that Job is a good guy. Perfect. Mm -hmm. But yet he has to go through this for the sake of his children. And that's the purpose of this message. Mm -hmm. A lot of the things that we are going through is for the sake of our children and our wives. Is it because they need to see it or is it necessarily because their sins are sort of kind of being put on you or something like that? Well, what we learn here is that the husband, the man of the house, the head of the household has to go through troubles else. The rest of the household would not suffer any of their troubles. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it covers in these verses. It may. We'll get to it in a second if it does. But when you think about it, how could the household suffer poverty if the head of the household is wealthy? That's true. There's no way. How can the family suffer hunger if the head of the household has a refrigerator full of food? That's right. never going to happen. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so Hermes has to go through this to give room. For his children to learn these particular lessons. Mm -hmm. But let's let's see if it says it here. It, it, we have to jump to another part of the book to get that. But let's go on. And now have they added lewdness to their other sins and the pollutions of their naughtiness. Thus have they filled up the measure of their iniquities. But do thou upbraid it, thy son, with all these words, and thy wife, who shall be as thy sister, and let her learn to reframe her tongue. With which she calumniates. So here they're going on from treachery. This regular disobedience. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To lewdness. Right. I mean, it's one thing to not do what the scripture tells you to do. Right. It's another thing to actually go on to worship and serve other gods. Mm -hmm. That's a, a whole nother level of this thing. And so mm -hmm. that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. We went from breaking common Bible laws to actually seeking out evil, going to birthday parties and Christmas parties and Easter celebrations and even doing Halloween mm -hmm. are these children who call themselves the children of the most high right. mm -hmm. serving the devil. Mm -hmm. And it says also, it says that they have filled up the measure of their iniquities. And that, like you said, has a lot to do with the idolatry. Absolutely. Because that's something that the father takes very seriously. Yeah, and they're filling it up. In, a, in other words, looking for ways to get into this idolatry. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's real easy, you know, with all of the multimedia now. But people are still pushing the envelope even farther than, you know, what YouTube and Google is allowing us to do. People just making up stuff mm -hmm. in order to, according to what we read in books like Deuteronomy, in order to separate themselves from our father's will. In mm -hmm. other words, they don't want to be good and righteous children. They want to be naughty and disobedient. Mm -hmm. So they go to these birthday parties and do these Christmas celebrations so that they can be separated. Mm -hmm. Then it goes on to start talking about the wife. Oh, yeah. Who shall be as thy sister. Okay, what does that, what well, does that mean? <laughs> well, what we have to understand here is that during the first era, when we had the Old Testament and during the second era, when we got the New Testament, the women didn't have the responsibilities of the men as far as feast days and stuff goes. Mm -hmm. In other words, they had the chance to stay at home 
while the men folk 20 years above had to make that trek all the way into Jerusalem. Right. Well, when you don't keep the feast days and stuff, that that kind of puts you on a lower level. Mm -hmm. Well, in this time, the women are expected to do everything we're doing now as far as feast days and celebrations. You can't stay home no more, right. which elevates you up to a position where you too can be spiritualized. Right. And then we become sister and brother. In other words, okay. we can think together. Right. I don't have to have so much responsibility over you because you're not, quote, a heathen anymore mm -hmm. because you are making that trip to Jerusalem with me now. Mm -hmm. And that's our father's plan for us is that the women will one day be elevated. So uh, the reason why we're not now goes back to the Adam and Eve story. Right. They were like sister and brother in the garden. Mm -hmm. That's why Adam wasn't following behind her saying what you're doing, where you're going. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, he, they were like sister and brother. Mm -hmm. and she did what she want. Mm -hmm. But she demoted herself by allowing herself to abandon our father's will and do Satan's will. Therefore, she got demoted. And then we find out in this same chapter that our father put Adam over her now because of her disobedience. Now she gets sort of taken out of the sister spot and she has to have somebody over her. Down in verse 16, she got demoted. Right. You're no longer the sister. Mm. But in the Shepherd of Hermon, she gets to come back because of her obedience. Mm. She's not so inclined to evil anymore and wants to go over there and hang out with Satan. She wants to come back to our father. And when she does, she will be elevated back to our sister position. So what the Shepherd of Hermes is sort of saying is that this is the sister position is where she should be. She's supposed to be, yeah. Right. But she, 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 yeah. But she cursed herself back there. Right. But notice this part. And let her learn to refrain her tongue with which she calumniates. Yeah. In other words, she's running her mouth and she's gossiping. Yeah. So this is something that she has to learn not to do, not to gossip and not to be so talkative. Yeah, and the scripture, you know, constantly backs that up because it talks about, I think it's in the book of Titus, how the women are to be keepers of a home and not to be gossipers. Not to, definitely not to be gossipers, right. calluminating, right. spreading gossip and stuff. But even the talkativeness, just because you're, you're talking don't mean you're calluminating. Right. You could just be talking a lot. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, you really shouldn't be talking because what you think you need to be saying doesn't necessarily help but it actually hurts. Yeah. And this talkativeness also could be related to the angel of inequity. Mm. You know, that's one of the characteristics of the angel of inequity is it makes men and women want to be over talkative. Okay. Yeah. So she has to watch out for that. And it says that she will learn. Mm -hmm. She's going to learn. And notice it doesn't say to teach her. Hmm. It doesn't give the man's responsibility to teach her. This is big, you know, because the battle is not ours. Mm -hmm. It's not our responsibility to retrain our wives, nor is it we're going to learn to retrain our children. Mm -hmm. It don't tell us to go snatch them out of the birthday party and grab them by the ear and drag them <laughs> home. It doesn't say that. Right. So let's go on and see what it does say. And when she shall hear these things, she will reframe herself and shall obtain mercy. The shepherd of Hermes. Mm -hmm. When she actually starts to hear the shepherd of Hermes, this is spiritual warfare, you know, when, when she actually starts to understand the messages of the, she of the shepherd of Hermes, she will no longer be so talkative and columination will be out of the question. Right. I mean, that's treachery right. to spread gossip and rumors on somebody. And so she won't want to do these things. And they also shall be instructed when thou shalt have reproached them with these words which the Lord has commanded to be revealed unto them. So what is it saying? We have to share the shepherd of Hermes with our family. Right. As men folk, as the head of the household, this is our probably our number one responsibility as far as our families goes. Mm -hmm. It's the shepherd of Hermes. Mm -hmm. Because not many other scriptural texts, and of course none of the secular texts, will tell you how to act. In order to be in the kingdom of heaven, no other scripture gives this level of instruction like we get in the shepherd of Hermes. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the vision one. This is kind of the, the opening book. But by the time you get to the third part, right. similar to, so, I mean, you're really getting a breakdown on humanity and why mm -hmm. we act like this as a whole. Mm -hmm. 
And then armed with that knowledge, we can start to correct ourselves, mm -hmm. getting where we're supposed to be. And this is what it says our children will do if we give them this book, right. if we share this with them. Right. All right. So let's go on. Then shall their sins be forgiven, which they have heretofore committed, and the sins of all the saints who have sinned even unto this day, if they shall repent with all their hearts and remove all doubts out of their hearts. So after they read the book, then they get the opportunity for repentance right because you remember who the shepherd is he is the angel of repentance yes he has the sole responsibility over repentance in other words if he don't put it on our heart to be repentant we will never be repentant mm -hmm. and so according to what we're reading here we ought to share the book with them they ought to read the book mm -hmm. and just give it to them and they throw it on the shelf once they read this book, maybe even a few times, getting to understand it. I know I've read it 50. Mm -hmm. But once they've read it a few times, getting this message on their heart, then they can start to move away from this lewdness, mm -hmm. giving them a chance to go on to enjoy the kingdom of heaven, else they're going to die out with the rest of humanity. Right. All right, so let's go on. For the Lord has won by his glory concerning his elect, having determined this very time that if anyone shall even now sin, he shall not be saved. This is talking about the day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have a chance to get right, but we have to get right. There's coming a day when our sins will be held accountable. That's what this scripture is here for. So that when this day comes, we'll know how to act. Mm -hmm. Well, what this is saying is when this day get here, if you commit a sin after that, you're going to get punished for it. So now is the time for your children and for your wife you know, to start correcting those things that are getting them in trouble. Because like you said, there's a time um, when they're not going to be able. And I guess it's going to be sort of like in the days of Job, where the whole household gets punished just for um, the sins that they haven't repented from. Yeah, you're right. Because when you look back at Job, it's like they were having birthday parties up here in verse four. And Job is trying to get that sin off of them in verse five and we see satan shows up in verse six but nothing bad happens until you get down here into verse 16 yeah. so it's like these activities these lewd activities is going on and going on and going on until this day mm -hmm. when all of them die mm -hmm. well you know some of us might say well you know that was his children but you know if we remember back in job you can prove that his wife was talkative. This message is also for his wife because she even made the statement, why don't you go on and curse God and die? So that's just nothing but just being talkative, just saying stuff out of your mouth. Stuff that's not even necessary to say. You're right. She's saying some stuff she shouldn't be saying here in this situation when her children has died too. Mm -hmm. You could imagine the things she says when things are going her way. Right. Yeah, so she definitely would have been talkative. Good point. Yeah. And then you see down in verse 16, you see it starts talking about those that are over the church. Right. Right. So it kind of starts changing gears here mm -hmm. for the uh, uh, ministers of the church. What it's saying is that they have to turn their ways towards righteousness. Mm -hmm. in, other, in other words, they have to start teaching what the scripture actually says so that they will receive the promises of the Bible. Right. Otherwise, they're going to get the curses of the Bible. But we're trying to focus on our families here, not necessarily those other ministers outside of our household. So let's jump down to verse 21. But thou, O Hermas, remember not the evils which thy sons have done, neither neglect thy sister, but take care that they amend of their former sins. So how does this work? You're not remembering the evils that they've done, but yet you're taking care to amend their former sins. Is it saying that you continue to pray for them? That's the only thing you can do, else you're just reminding them of what they used to do or something. Or maybe you're just there with them now to commit to prevent them from going to the birthday party mm -hmm. uh, or something. I hmm. What I'm not gathering out of this is we need to go correct them. This is not the message of this book, nor the message of the scripture that is our responsibility to correct anybody. Well, you see that Job didn't actually go to them and start fussing with them and fighting with them. 
he actually just start making the sacrifices um, unto the father for them. Is that right? Okay, so Job was trying to amend their sins. Yeah. Yeah, but it don't say Job could have did it. It kind of says they have to do it. Yeah, but take care that they amend for their former sins. And That's because right. they never did, they perished. Yeah. But I think 22 gives us some hints. Let's look at 22. For they will be instructed by this doctrine if thou shalt not be mindful of what they have done wickedly. But it's saying they will be instructed by this doctrine. So they definitely have to read it. Again, it's saying that to give them this book mm -hmm. and you know have them to read it. Our mm -hmm. children have them to read this book. And like I said, I've read it before and it will work. Mm -hmm. They, in fact, matter of fact, I'm remembering now how we were going through a period um, when our children, when we would find them arguing and, and doing stuff, we would have them yeah. to read the Shepherd of Hermes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it would work. They would come back with a better attitude. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I guess we could chalk that one up to intuition as well, mm -hmm. because what it's saying here is that all of them need to get it. Yeah. We need to share the Shepherd of Hermes with all of these family members so that they can gain this instruction. Mm -hmm. But then notice how it says, if, which we always say is the most important word in the Bible, if thou shalt not be mindful of what they have done. And that's talking to Hermas. Talk to Hermas, yeah. Saying not to be resentful mm -hmm. because these people have been doing stuff to Hermas. Right. You know, you got to remember to the wicked person, righteousness is an abomination. Mm -hmm. So whereas Hermas would have been pious and perfect mm -hmm. and his children and his wife who were not would have been looking at him with evil eyes, looking right. at him with wickedness mm -hmm. and even treating Hermes bad. Right. And so what Hermes is being instructed is to let them be instructed by this book and don't be resentful trying to remember what it is that they did. Yeah, so I guess he wouldn't go around, well, I remember when you did this and I remember you did that. And I think that backs up when it goes to verse three, go 23, ahead. when it says, for the remembrance of evil work is death but the forgetting of them eternal life. So we have to forget the evils from these culminating wives and these lewd children and share the shepherd of Hermes with them and stand back and let our father work it all out. So I'm going to ask you, is that hard to do when somebody has in some way seems intentionally like tried to do evil to you or sabotage you or stuff like that? Is it hard to forget? And it, start, you know, actually, uh, I guess, actually start seeing them in a good light instead of a, a bad light. Yes, it is. Until you get the understanding from a book called Second Baruch. Mm -hmm. He actually wrote three books mm -hmm. and all of them are really good. But the second book gives us information on why people act the way they act. The treacherous people of the world doing all of this evil here and there, it explains it. Okay. And so then after getting this understanding, it takes the argument out. It takes the fight out. This is one of the things that we learn about in spiritual warfare coming from our teachings on the Jezebel spirit and mm -hmm. strife. Mm -hmm. Strife, the angel Barachiel is the frustration of strife. Mm -hmm. And when I learned that, I read all of the books of Baruch and the thing about second Baruch is that it teaches you what's going on here for the lack of a better word so that when you see these people doing things against you instead of being angry with them you more pity them and you more feel sorry for the fact that they're in this situation they're that they're, they're not there by an accident right and a lot of them are affected by demonic spirits and all of this that they can't handle or deal with and even though they're causing you frustrations and pain you, when you understand it, it takes the fight out of it and you want to just go give them a hug instead of a butt whooper so you understand that when the scripture talks about um you're not necessarily wrestling against that person, but against the spirits that are inhabiting. Yeah, you learn that from Paul, and then you come over here to Baruch, and you kind of learn, okay, yeah, these ain't flesh and blood. These are right. principalities and powers. Mm -hmm. And when you realize you're dealing with principalities and powers in your own household, your children and your wife, mm -hmm. then it changes. Right. You know, and you, you start to take pity on them and then want to help them. Right. And that should be the overall message from this video, and even my whole channel. Scripture is it. 
That's what I, I mean, we have over a thousand videos, lecture videos up, and they're all about scripture. Mm -hmm. You know, we get all of our information from the scripture. And these books that we're talking about here are extremely important. Mm -hmm. Some people have never heard of these books. Right. But you have to remember that those in charge of our religion, those in charge of the religion of the world, don't want you to know this. Because with the scripture, you don't need religion. Mm. Religion is the replacement for scripture. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so there are those behind the pulpit who would rather you not know about this. Right. And they're doing a good job of it, but we're learning it, so let's go on. Okay. 24. But thou, O Hermas, has undergone a great many worldly troubles for the offenses of thy house, because thou hast neglected them as things that did not belong unto thee. And thou art wholly taken up with thy great business. So Hermes is out here running his business. Hermes has been neglecting his family. Has not been raising them right. Could it be that when it says as things that did not belong unto thee, he is saying, well, that ain't got nothing to do with me. Well, yeah, he, he's in his house. You can imagine Hermes in his house with all of his wife and his children. But he's concentrated on himself. In his business. Mm -hmm. So he gets up in the morning, leaves the house at, you know, in the dark, mm -hmm. goes to work, does his work, gets back home after dark, you know, gets his shower and his food, gets back and gets in the bed and gets ready for the next day. Where mm -hmm. is the interaction with his family? Where is the lecture? Where is the Bible studies? Right. Where is the, 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 the fatherhood? Where is the husbandry? Mm -hmm. Hermes is concentrating on his own stuff as if these people don't even belong to him. They just a, living in his household. That's a lot of that going on today where people have, you know, it's not so much as a family doing stuff together. Everybody is doing their own separate doing thing. Doing their own today. individual thing. And mm -hmm. you can't wait till they get 18 years old so you can kick them out of the house. Right. You know, and go on. Well, that's kind of what Job was doing. And, you know, Herman said a lot of us today, you know, I got yeah. some of this to make up for myself. And that's why we're doing this video. Right. Even, you know, within our house and without in our community, and especially, I guess, with the, a lot of people in my family, you know, our ch children being 21 and 20, our older children still live, you know, under our roof. And a lot of people are like, well, why aren't you sending them out to do their own thing? You know, you're actually stagnating them by having them to live, you know, under your roof. Yeah. But I don't know. What do you say to that? Yeah, well, I say I lived it. You know, my mm -hmm. firstborn son, as soon as he turned 18, you know, I put him in the military. You know, him and I had a discussion. I was probably a little bit more influential than I should have been. And he ended up in the Air Force. Well, I'm not making that mistake with any more of my children. You know, mm -hmm. they can stay here for forever if they if they so desired. But they'll have to be obedient to the scripture to do so. Right. Else, you know, we're subject to some of these curses. And I hate, you know, something to happen to anybody, you know, especially my children because of all this going on here. But I don't think this is the case. Mm -hmm. I'm not gathering this from this that the children are going to die this time. Mm -hmm. What I'm gathering is that they're going to go through something mm -hmm. that's going to convince them that they need to stop with these lewd acts. Right. Um, but let's go on because I think it says it here. Nevertheless, for this cause shall thou be saved that thou hast not departed from the living God, and thy simplicity and singular continency shall preserve thee if thou shalt continue in them. So this is talking about Hermes. Mm -hmm. You know, Hermes himself is going to make it. Right. He's going to the kingdom of heaven or, you know, he's going to heaven one of the way. Mm -hmm. He's going to the good place. The question is his family. Right. Where are they going? Right. You know, and we learn in the Keys of Enoch that we're supposed to go across into the kingdom of heaven ten strong. Mm. 10 people, mm -hmm. 10 members of the household are supposed to go over together. Well, if Hermes's children all perish, that means Hermes is by himself. He has to create a whole new family or he's going to be a man on an island trying to live in a post-apocalyptic world by himself. Right. And that's not going to work. He needs his family. I mean, this is the plan for our father, just like Noah. And his family were the only ones to survive and they had to repopulate the earth. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to get 144 families this time mm -hmm. and they're going to have that responsibility with that multitude and no man can number who would probably be their families and a few neighbors or whatever. Mm -hmm. If you didn't follow that message, these people will go on into the kingdom of heaven. So the only real question is, 
is Hermes going to be able to bring his family with him? Well, 26 says, yes, they shall save all such as do such things and walk in innocence and simplicity. Again, this is talking about Hermes, though. Okay. This is, and everybody. But he's talking specifically to Hermes we saw up there in verse 24. Right. Yes, they, they will be saved. But again, what about the family? But I think we have the message here that, you know, where to share this book with them. Right. Just a book, just a document. But this could actually change these people's lives. And it will. Yeah. So you're so it's like share it with them and then leave the rest up to them. Absolutely. Up to the Elohim, you know, because they're going to be the ones that the angel of repentance will put repentance on their heart. Mm -hmm. And then they'll start to get away from some of this lewd activity. Mm -hmm. But the message is, is to go in with a book instead of go in with a belt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll give you some links down in the descriptions to this book so we can make it easier to share it with our families. Yeah. Even the audio. Yeah, we'll put a couple of audios down there. One is a dramatized audio. It'll be a um, little bit better to listen to, but it'll be a little bit watered down. Mm -hmm. So we'll put the other one up that is a better translation. You know, it's a little bit monotone. Maybe you can listen to that second to get some more understanding. The thing is, we're supposed to listen to this book or read it often. Right. So we'll put some uh, PDFs down there and even some links that people can go buy this book. The thing is, we got to get this book into our families if we want them to be saved. Mm -hmm. Else they're going to perish. Yeah. We are too. Yeah. Without this mess, without the shepherd of Hermes, nope, we're not going to make it in. Yeah. What does mm -hmm. it say? We, we will get to see the kingdom of heaven, but we won't know how to live there. Right. You know, you won't have the skills to be a spiritualized individual in the next era. Mm -hmm. And so that's why so many people are going to be perishing soon. And the apocalypse is because they're not going to gain this message and know what to do to survive. Yeah. So with all of that, we're going to close this video out so you can get to sharing it with your family. Mm -hmm. And please give us some feedback in the comment section on how it went. Yeah, we would be um, interested in knowing and also to let us know how we can, you know, pray for your family. We you have love anything, to do that. Yeah, if you need any help in that area and... You can pray for ours as well. And we thank you very much for it and all that you do to support our channel. And with that, we're going to say Shalom. Shalom.